The Ricoh GR3X. I've been using this camera for a little over a year now. Haven't made any videos about it because I didn't know what to make of it. When Ricoh announced the GR3X, I was excited but also confused. The GR line of cameras have always been fitted with wide-angle lenses. It's a perfect recipe that is loved by all of its users. I didn't understand why they needed to make a 40mm version of it. A 40mm is almost a 50. And 50, if I'm honest, is not a focal length that I enjoy using very much. I think what convinced me to buy it in the end was a very simple reason. And that is the fact that I no longer shoot in tightly packed and overpopulated cities now. Toronto is very different. I struggle a lot with the 28 here. I mean, it's still my favorite focal length, but sometimes, I just can't help but wonder, maybe there's a better way. In theory, with everything here being spread so far apart, the 40mm should help me bring things closer together. I can take 10 steps instead of 20. I can bring in more background detail and it'll also be a lot easier to fill the frame. And the thing is, I remember getting the GR3 at a time when I was feeling down and frustrated with my photography. That camera managed to make me love the process again. So maybe the GR3X can do the same for me here. I crafted a perfect scenario in my head, bought the camera, and I didn't like it. The GR3X is the exact same camera as the GR3, only with a 40mm lens. I mix these cameras up all the time. The subtle differences are only noticeable if you look hard enough. A different lens and front ring, a slightly thicker body, and a tiny bit more weight. I could actually make this entire video using my GR3 review. Everything I said about that camera applies to this one as well. The overall image quality and sharpness of the photos taken with the GR3X is just as impressive or maybe even better than the GR3. But the photos feel flat. The GR3X will render really normal looking images. And normal sometimes can mean boring. Like a traditional 50mm lens, these photos lack the same kind of drama and fun that the 28 and GR3 gives you. As a longtime GR user, it's also an incredibly strange feeling shooting with a GR camera that is not equipped with a wide angle lens. If you've ever owned a GR camera, shooting with the X will throw you off. These cameras are made to be wide. I've built a lot of muscle memory shooting with the GR3, 
So to have a lens that is so different, but in the exact same body, it's confusing. Even after a year of shooting with it, I still have trouble adjusting sometimes. This new lens also doesn't feel as quick. The autofocus on this camera is definitely slower. And that again will throw you off if you're used to the snappiness from a GR3. So we weren't off to a great start. The thought of selling it crossed my mind a lot of times. But I had this trip to Hong Kong and Japan, so I thought, one last shot. After this trip, if I'm still not feeling it, I'm getting rid of it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Are you looking for new ways to level up your career or maybe even turn a hobby into a new side business? Check out Skillshare. From practical skills on photography and filmmaking to important theory on freelancing and productivity. Skillshare has it all covered with a wide variety of classes to help you elevate your creative career. For example, I learned a lot from this lesson with Tabitha Park on advanced lighting in product photography. She shared a lot of useful techniques that helped me create some of the visuals in this video. If you're interested in joining Skillshare, the first 1,000 viewers to use the sign-up link in my description can get a one-month free trial. Get inspired, learn new skills, and explore your creativity with Skillshare today. I forced myself to bring both cameras out every day during this trip. These GR cameras weigh nothing, so carrying both was effortless. I was, I was, thinking, about, <laughs> I was thinking about shooting film today, but okay. I changed my mind, the GR. Because I might, I might actually shoot tonight yeah. as well, okay. at night. I like to shoot digital at night. Yeah. It's just, you can do more. Yeah. Yeah. With film during the daytime, it's nice, but... 90% of light. the time I used a GR3. But every once in a while, there would be a scene where I needed more reach. Either something was stopping me from getting closer, or the composition just didn't work with the 28. That's where the GR3X came into play. I'd quickly take that one shot and switch back to the GR3. Switching between the cameras this entire trip helped me realize what role the GR3X plays in my setup. This camera isn't the star player. It's the bench player that's always ready and shows up when asked to perform. As soon as that clicked for me, I found a purpose for the GR3X and I fell in love with this dual GR setup. This is what a lot of event photographers do. They carry two bodies with different lenses. It offers speed and keeps them ready for every situation. With these GR cameras, you can do that in a very compact way. One in each pocket or one around the wrist and the other strapped over the shoulder. This 28 and 40 combo quickly became the ultimate street setup for me.
I'm glad I gave the GR3X enough time for it to make an impression on me. These point-and-shoot cameras really are special. Like I said in my GR3 review, that camera inspired me to shoot every day, and because of that, I improved a lot as a photographer. Very few cameras that I've owned in the past have been able to do that. Even though the GR3X will not get the same amount of action as my GR3, I still think it has an important role in my setup. In fact, I've recently found a new purpose for it. It's now the camera that I leave around the house for family moments. I've been documenting the journey of our new dog. She's a shelter dog from Korea that's had a rough past and is extremely fearful of everything. In this mini personal project of mine, I'm trying to capture all the ups and downs of her new life with us. The GR3X is always in my pocket or right next to me when I'm spending time with her. It's a great camera to use to document your life. It's easy, it's lightweight, and it takes amazing portraits. I can also hand this camera over to my wife or whoever is with me, and they'll automatically know how to use it. There's no explanation needed, just point and shoot. Anyway, there you have it. These are some of my thoughts on the Ricoh GR3X. Both of these cameras, without a doubt, are the favorites in my collection. They continue to keep photography fun for me and has helped me produce many of my favorite photos. So if you're considering a GR camera, I would still recommend getting the regular GR3 as it offers a bit more character and versatility. But the GR3X, it's also an amazing camera. You really can't go wrong with either one of them. You know what? Just get both. They might be the only cameras that you'll need.